Hello everyone, welcome back uh, with uh, myself, Tyler Edlin, and Adam Duff. Greetings. Uh, we're here for another critiquing another brush sauce challenge. Uh, yes. And for this month, uh, there was a couple different passages of text, and you voted on it. And it was set up kind of like um, some flavor text for card art or to do an illustration, as we would typically get in the industry. And so the, the text was... Um, uh, a fine mist wets the wood plank bridge, and the roar of the waterfall drowning out the clashing of swords. Uh, a shadowy warrior steps onto the battlefield and betrays his allies. So, with that said, it's just like put, put uh, a sword fight on a waterfall type of uh, background uh, on a bridge, and basically some guys is kind of going at it, and you can interpret it basically from there. Yeah, as most of you has. But that's the idea, and that's where we're coming from. We have ten submissions which is great for us. We can, can kind of critique these with not rushing through as quick as we had to in the past, and also why we don't kind of publicly hold this group on Facebook, because we don't have the time to critique hundreds of submissions. Yeah. We're offering our knowledge and our experience here for you guys at our own opinions, but, you know, if you have to seek us out on Google, you know, the Google group for a little bit, then that that's, the, like, the only price of an entry, and anybody can join and submit. Yeah, yeah. And so we'll, yeah, we'll, submissions this time too. we'll just go from top left to right. Yeah. Daniel Manning, number one. All right, let's have a look. All right. Let me try to blow this up on the screen. There we go. Awesome. All right. Uh, Adam, want to start us off? All right. Well, definitely, there's definitely an illustratory style, a lot of nice use of texture, nice feathery texture, which I love. You really feel the brush stroke, which is definitely, you know, it doesn't feel like your generic run of the mill. Everybody has the same style type of artwork. Mm -hmm. Number one thing, I'm pretty sure that uh, Tyler will probably agree on me with this is uh, lack of contrast. It's a little bit dull in the values. You're a little bit shy with the values, and adding a little bit of that would definitely help. And um, that also uh, relates to the main character. If you see the little girl, or the, the, the girl who looks like she's, well, standing at the bridge casting or whatever with her sword, um, that sh you, can, you completely lose her. Like a medium red against a medium red, you completely don't even notice she's there until you really start to yeah. look. So that character should really see, jump out at you. See really. in your original thumbnail how bold uh, yeah. the contrast. And so when you added detail and when you flush things up from your original, things yeah. got a bit muddy yeah. and, and you lose focus. And and the girl uh, in the water? Well, go back to grayscale and you see that girl in the water completely disappears. You don't even know she's there. Yeah, because yeah. again, you're relying, I think in this case, too much on color, which works in some instances, but the, the values are just much too muddy. Mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend simplifying things, grouping things in a really bold shapes, and I'll bring this artist up a few times, maybe throughout this episode, that I've kind of found that is a great kind of uh, reference for you guys when I talk about this sort of thing. His name is uh, Marcos Mediu, mm -hmm. and he uh, really is good at grouping and simplifying his value structure. You could take a sketch or a drawing like this and paint it up and add all the detail you want all day, but it's the fact that it's it's the simplicity of things yes. that shows his strong sense of design and yep. what ultimately what, what a lot of clients lo are looking for these days is your unique and your, your kind of vision with your design aesthetics. Because um, hundreds and, and tons of people, more and more people, are they're using special 3D tools. or It's easier than ever to kind of render fully out scenes. But so people are looking to make yourself stand out from the crowd, basically. It's, kinda, it's going to boil down to your design sense. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And notice how notice how in this particular case, he, the artist is not trying to show off with some fancy dynamic composition. He frames it, gets right to the point, you know where your characters are, bang, 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 it's done. There's no showing off. Mm -hmm. You show off is very often a good way to confuse your audience. The, de the detail and um, the, you know, the visual effects, the mists, the rains, all that can come later, but just group your scene and to break it down into to very graphic reads at first in yeah. both color and value and your be you'll, it'll, your scene will benefit from it. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, the other issue with this is it, it just it's lacking a ton of polish. These sort of things, if it's particularly for card art, the image is going to be like this big on yeah. a card. So it's like, what is happening? If you're making, bring your image down to that size and if, you know, you show it to your friend, your mother, your spouse, whoever, and they're like, huh? 
then that's a good indication that you need a stronger d design within your composition. Yeah, that's what your director would tell you. They would say it, we that's not going to read well, you know, and then they'll have, they'll send it back to you to polish up your your composition and your values for sure. That's the number one thing they would say. The other thing I'd say to watch out for is uh, uh, careful with redundancies with your hues. Okay, so for instance, you've got that nice. I like the the light teal turquoise type of color for the background, which is lovely. And it's all throughout everywhere. your mid ground and foreground as well. Yeah. So you want to vary that up a little bit. You know, play with contrast, play with your saturation, play with your hues a little bit, vary it up a little bit. So you're not staring at the same color. You're not looking at a hospital wall type of thing, right? You got to be watch out for that kind of stuff. Yeah. You don't want your painting to look basically institutionalized. Yeah. So even if we just take that one one kind of background and there. start to separate it there you go um, yeah. by your whole canvas by by basically by shapes um, it's going to make the world a difference for you yeah look at that just that how that breaks up your colors and gives you a little bit more variety and maybe. you want to do that in the foreground the background and play around with lots of thumbnails I don't know if you've did some before this but don't settle on your first one nine yeah. out of ten times your best idea will not be your first one yep yeah. Usually the good ones start to kick in around your fifth or sixth, I find, usually. But great job. Thank you for submitting. Beautiful. I hope yeah. that helps. Yeah. All right, Toby Fox. Mr. Fox. He is back. The illustrious Mr. Fox. So, so this is, is really cool. This is like a whole different take yeah. on, on the text, which is, um, you know, this is kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they like that, sometimes they don't in regards to clients. But uh, this is really really like strong imagery though very and you know what it's funny I'm looking at I love the the final color version you've got over on the left but if you look at your simplified your you know, kind of two-tone uh, color passes These over on the right are yeah. more visually striking yeah there's a simplification there's, there's a simplification there's, there but it's striking I like that there, there's something where and this happens to a lot of us uh, when you you detailed uh, and began to render things up it, things stiffened Mm. Um, and you almost kind of suck the life out of this beautifully rendered sketch. Th mm -hmm. There's a lot more action and motion within your characters here um, that we're losing within this. Uh, these shapes of the hoods in the front are a lot stronger of a read that we're, we're losing that here. Yeah. Um, and there's a great value structure and simplicity to this back here. And that, hit structure. The, the harmony is lovely too. You don't have to be complicated with your colors. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So the, I'm, I mean, I'm great for that you submitted this, and we, this is just like we don't run into this sort of issue all the time on on this kind of program with the critique. So I think if a lot of people watching this could benefit a lot from f from this painting. Um, yeah. You can see like everything's really simple. It's kind of graphic. This has so much in common with the artist we just look at there, uh, Matthew. And then what happened here? You got too loose and too. Um, too foggy and atmospheric uh, with a lot of the, the way that the density is with the lighting. It, you can make things like, you, we can see the shape of this edge back here and it's basically like this. That's mm -hmm. way too jittery. You want to simplify that and make shapes more bold and dynamic, kind of like we have here. Yeah. Any other two cents, Adam? Yes, and that is, remember what the subject is and remember who your actors are. Remember your stage, right? If I have it, let's imagine my stage is this big, I'm not going to stick my character up on the top left, especially if we're looking at them from the nosebleed section, right? We want to be able to get up as close and personal to that action and the story being told, whatever's asked of you in that script, as possible. Because like Tyler said, your card ends up being this big. Your card ends up being, you know, not much bigger than this, than, than this post-it note, right? Even smaller. So. Uh, it's got you got to be able to read everything there so that what you have to do is get your camera up close to the action a little bit more so if your character you've got your main character this woman have her fill more of the real estate on this page don't forget you're also gonna have probably something covering it. you're gonna have text in there right so you want to have to be able to fit it all into this tiny little square so don't waste space with too much negative space that serves nothing towards the story you got to avoid that when you're doing these types of fantasy illustrations that's hugely important yeah. yeah, I was trying to show this as like framing it in and bringing it to this character, yeah. making more overlaps. Yeah, um, and even select her. Make a select. Just do. You want to do a quick copy paste thing and just scale her so she fills that frame. She fills the image better. Just yeah, like we could basically take the whole. We could take the whole mid ground here. All these mm -hmm. shapes. Um, 
I mean, it makes for a lovely composition as a scene, but this isn't a scene shot. This is a fan. This is a card, right? We're thinking of a tabletop game, so you want to make sure that the card is a description of somebody, even, or something. So we have to identify with that person. Even if this was like a splash page image or something like that, in like a Pathfinder or D and D book, yeah. Um, it, the 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 smaller the image can be and read at a smaller level, ultimately the better the design. Yeah. So it, it, either way, it'll benefit you to, no matter what you go for. But see, when we start to crop things like this, um, it's a lot more personal and there's a lot less wasted real estate in the in the scene. And we can appreciate the details of the character. The just, which, you just ask yourself, what is this scene about? Um, yeah. And it's you'll probably realize uh, nothing in the background, all this real estate kind of going to the background is not adding anything to the original statement in the story moment. We get a hint of that back here with the negative space, and that's all we need to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Get to the point. That's it. You don't Great need job, to Toby. That's with too much stuff. Really. Characteristically gorgeous Toby work. That's all i got to say. Toby's Toby's doing some nice stuff. Yeah, I really like this, and I like that he kind of categorized references and did studies. Yeah, as well. Like you're really learning the material, yeah, and I think this came through perfectly with the with this painting. Sorry, who did this? Who's piece uh, this? Uh, um, Anton. Oh, Anton. Okay, cool. He just signed up for my mentorship. We had a session, and it was awesome. Nice, nice. Shameless uh, self plug. <laughs> 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 Absolutely shame, but he's gonna grow a lot. Um, I think to stick, if you were to stick closer to the flavor text, what we have here, we'd, we'd see like more kind of soldiers and kind of at ease, or not at ease, but like unsteady, like with the thought of the betrayal here. So mm -hmm. we see their, we'll see like their silhouettes and their weapons, like not big shapes like that, but like, we have little guys. We see their weapons and maybe spears mm -hmm. and like most basically multiple characters. And I think to keep this kind of closer to the shot that, that was in the text and I think it would kind of make this a little bit better too in in narrative you know we have you know the silhouettes of more of the the army on one side or the other but yep. keeping them subdued in the shadow like this is the way to go and yep. I think this is a perfect shot for what it is this is absolutely majestic and beautiful um, for what the end uh, and I think it sells that particular shot of it's, maybe it's coming in and establishing the scene really well but ultimately um, if you were to continue this as a narrative piece, the next one would be to do is something really kind of close up and intimate like that. But That's this is not that type of shot. This is what it is, and we'll celebrate, you know, for uh, the composition based off what you actually uh, took it for. So, yeah. yeah. What do you think, Adam? Well, I, as if this was a shot of, let's say that, let's say if the name of this card or the description of this card was, um, you know, uh, Battle on the Bridge or something like that. Then this would be perfect. Confided, the character is a little bit small. They're really kind of there's these tiny little pimples on a big, big, majestic scene. This is a very environment centric centric piece. Again, you got to remember when your when your director says, you know, when the director says this is what the card's about, you have to deliver the story first. The, you can't allow yourself to get carried around the scene if it doesn't play into the narrative. So you have to make sure that you're sticking to that narrative first. Establishing what that is, and then you can frazzle dazzle it with a nice environment after. But the and, environment is decorative; it's not the card, right? And Adam, and on that note, so, that's that is something I tell a lot of my students is, especially when it's for personal work or for client yeah. stuff. Ask yourself, what is the image about? What is the story? Every that's why we make pictures, right? To tell a story. Yeah. So ask yourself what the highest, most important part of that story is when you set out to do a scene, and make sure it's fully celebrated in yeah. the composition. And I'll add something to that. Yeah, I'll add something to that. And that is, there's certain students I've had. I've mentored a lot of people, right? Shameless plug, yes, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I've mentored a lot of people. And some people, you know, you'll see, remember, you got to stick to the narrative. Stick to the narrative. And they keep, every time they come back, they come up with these gorgeous environmental scenes when it's actually a character piece. And they can't control themselves. And after about, you know, a week or two of this, I turn to them at one point and I say, have you ever considered being an environment artist? Because you sure as shit love painting environments. And they go, oh, you know, well, it does come naturally to me. Well, that's something to consider. You know, if you find that you have this habit, maybe it's that habit's trying to tell you something. Maybe you so, want to reconsider things, you know? And, and as a closing note, uh, this is an, a gorgeous example of unity with variety in terms of color palettes. Yeah. It's all basically uh, analogous, but there's little hints of colors, uh, you know, colors trickled in, and yeah. it's just so unified and very diverse at the same yeah. time. It's absolutely popping this image to life. 
And the colors of those trees over on the left, the purples and reds and mm -hmm. pinks, gorgeous. Gorgeous. And I'm guessing he probably studied some of Nathan Fox's paintings to kind of nail that. <laughs> yeah. <a laughs> Just little, guessing. Uh, All right, Chris. Mr. Chris H. Let's see what we're doing. Or Miss Chris H. I Miss don't Chris, know. That's true. Chris, Chris, right? Now, we both saw this and we both had the same reaction to it. Compositionally, as far as a read is concerned, nailed it. This is what some of the, uh, some of the other people needed to kind of do in their work. And that's yeah. getting the... Uh, the shapes right yes absolutely a lovely use of light on dark dark on light the most highest contrast nice clear framing of your main character by the waterfall getting right to the right. point there, there's yep. nothing distracting about the shapes in this nope and Absol that's always good i mean it gets things are getting a little muddy over here but that's fine because it's keeping the focus where the shapes are strong right yep. here and that's that's where it's important absolutely yeah um as far as an illustration piece, I think it's absolutely love. It's a beautiful piece of concept art. Would I call this something again for 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 a trading card for per se? If we were thinking in that realm, not really. You're a little too zoomed away, um, and narratively, we're not really getting betrayal. We're just getting a, a warrior standing on a rock by the waterfall. We're not getting the whole betrayal side of things. Maybe right? if there was like a couple dead soldiers now in the water here. Yep. And maybe you see like a hint of a bridge in the mist over here, mm -hmm. and you fog it out and you make it really, really soft, you know. And we we see in the foreground again swords kind of coming out of the water, maybe like a body, and then of course some some blood kind of just running down the stream or or on the on top of the rock even. Yep. Then you're adding a narrative to this piece, and mm -hmm. then it's making a lot stronger of a statement. Yep. You've got to remember, like, artistically, when you're working on a piece of artwork, the difference between producing personal and professional work is you have to learn to follow direction. And that is a tough one for us because that's where we pull ourselves into the realm of the, dis of the unfamiliar sometimes. you got to get used to that. Always listen to the boss. The boss is always telling you what that piece is about. you got to respect that. Otherwise, you're just not doing what you're, you're not, you're not, you're not doing what you were paid for, right? I, I love this thumbnail that you have here, by the way. This is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. You have some great ideas going on. And yeah. I I think if you do one of these challenges again, you'll you'll take this feedback into consideration, and it's going to come back even stronger. Yeah. yeah. It's a very loved piece of artwork from both of us, no doubt. It's just lovely. All right. Progress. Here. See, that makes me think... I didn't see a final one, so please okay. don't th don't throw me on the stake if you had a more finished submission on this. This is what I saw in the list of things. It, maybe it, maybe you forgot to submit it, or maybe I glossed over it. If that's the case, I wholeheartedly apologize. Okay, but there are some successful things going on here as far as this composition is concerned. Mm -hmm. the first thing is the number one, almost, almost. Uh, you can use a little tweak, but. Just the very fact that the betrayal is up in your face. You see, this is a good idea. This is a good example of getting straight to the narrative first, right? Yeah. The sword, the betrayal, pulling the head, about to st about to cut his throat. Here's the bridge. Right? People are reading betrayal on the bridge. They get betrayal on the bridge. They're looking at the card. They're reading the description. They get exactly the same thing. And that's what you got to do. So in that particular case, I think that's awesome. What do you think are, like... Uh, technically, in terms of this, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think the composition's good. Um, I'd even, I'd even simplify a lot of this out and just like make this like the waterfall in the background and have it come like looping through the bridge down here and like zigzagging and maybe like these guys are at the edge of the water or they're in the w river bank and that's what this duel is. But mm -hmm. definitely maybe even have like the silhouettes back here of like the other army of the soldiers where the betrayal happened and yeah. you know, things kind of escalated and they fell off and things are happening down here. Yeah. Um, and on that note, like this shape back here is a little too busy and samesy. Uh, I like that you simplified it, of course, uh, but I think uh, just even simplifying it further and, and grouping it, you know, as a mass mm -hmm. rather um, just to simple, because like I see like the same hump and rhythm of shapes here and that's distracting for me. Yeah, especially behind the, the head. The other thing, too, I would add is a good reference for you, and actually this applies to everybody who submitted this week, a very good reference for composition and how to draw your attention to the focal point is um, uh, Norman Rockwell. 
And what he does, it's very common, it's the simplest imaginable technique, and he doesn't show off about it, he just frames it. So you'll have the main characters, where he wants your audience to look first, and you have a nice frame around it. Job done. And he doesn't put anything distracting around the action. It's just the faces, the expressions, and a nice frame window, whatever, that's, that's going around the action. If you stick a busy bush, you're taking away. You're detracting from where you want people to look. So just take a note, make note of that. Yeah, something like that. We have the, the cliff up here, the bridge going in between yeah. the valley, the waterfall coming off yeah. you know, in between. We have all the mist down here, simplifying a lot of that out. And then we have everything kind of pointing to the characters as well. Like, you know, reinforce the shape of yeah. that forest. Just use a little bit of simple shapes, and then this will all be density. And I think that'll work out great. There you go. Love to see this finish. Post it in the group if you haven't. Yeah, it's, it's going in a very nice direction. Hey, Rob. Er all right, we've got our classical animator, our badass classical animator, I might add. <laughs> like, you have phenomenal drawing skills. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I feel it's got that lovely, loose, <laughs> thick-lined, you know, very rich Glen Keane type of quality to it. I absolutely love it. Um, it would have took me 20 times, or attempts, to kind of get the energy and the moment that you captured here. And yeah. You seem to kind of pulled it off in three or four, so yeah. that is that is good skills. Yeah. On a, on a technical level and everything, delivery. Absolutely lovely. I would also say, like, something you can learn from this as well for anybody else who's watching, when you're doing an action pose, uh, it's uh, very often people will have a tendency to do the impact. It's a very good sign of people who are used to doing dynamic poses. You'll have the, the hit, right? Face, fist, and you'll mark that as your moment. It's a lot more powerful to have the before the hit or the after the hit. And what he's done here is a good example of that. It's the after swipe. Mm -hmm. and blood trickle after that rocky moment, you know, the spit flying type of thing. And you can see how di how powerful that is for, for a dynamic pose. I think that reads beautifully. Um, compositionally, there's one thing I would say here is you have that pillar in the background with the, with the I guess, the lanterns, you know, the two torches, mm -hmm. where I would, it would probably be better to put, put that somewhere else because you've got the sword and the lanterns in just... Yeah, well, it's, it's just like too butter. busy. Yeah. I, would, I would actually even pull like on from um, Anton's notes and get some of this nice blue kind of color kind of filling sure. in and have the characters kind of bold out. Like if you have like a big waterfall coming down like right here and then some mist yeah. or hints of trees back here. I think yeah, my least favorite part about it is basically the background um, and some of the color choices. But overall, though, it's it's really good. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. It really does look like a frame from a film, like that tangent or mm -hmm. that flutter was just because that's the frame you caught in an animated movement, which is great. It creates the spontaneity, but when you're coming from an animation perspective, I can see why you did that. It makes sense because you're thinking in, in terms of movement. But as for a painterly composition, you frame things very intuitively. You don't you don't yes. try to create that 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 awkward clutter. You frame the action nicely. That's it. So if you ever revisit it, you know, take my suggestions with a grain of salt, but that's how personally I would have handled it, you know, on top, the background design and set design on top of your phenomenal uh, camera placement and uh, uh, action focus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Rodney's back. Rodney. All right, let's see what he's got here. Ah, there we go. Excellent, excellent framing and visual storytelling. Right in on the action, we see mm -hmm. what, right? And that's a, an excellent way. It's unapologetically telling you exactly what the hell is going on, right? Mm -hmm. This dude just betrayed somebody and he's got a bloody crown in his head. That's that's fantastic. Uh, how about technical stuff? What do you think? I think the perspective on the the clouds isn't as strong as it as it could be. Mm -hmm. um, and on that note, they they are a little soft. And oh, a lot of things are a little too soft, even though he is what is in focus. Yeah. There's still certain kind of like directives that we'd want to take in terms of like taking some of these shapes again, and you know since it, it is with a um, we're looking up at the clouds, up at the character, mm -hmm. that's a hard kind of perspective to sell anyway, and I'd almost find yeah. specific references you know just for that. But we see like huge kind of clumps and shapes, and basically the undersides of clouds, maybe light yeah. peeking through in between them, uh, and basically make them appear a little bit more solid in terms of uh, form in some of those areas. See, like this this huge shape right here is the bottom 
of you know one of these clouds. Mm -hmm. So if he's like here, we see like this this whole bottom shape of the cloud, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is not an easy thing to do, and um, not for a lot of people. And basically, as you get down, you would get down here, the clouds become a little more flat and a little bit more like we're used to seeing them. Mm -hmm. Uh, so while Tyler's doing that, I would also mention at the same time, um, uh, be careful with your saturations. Remember that there's two different worlds of art. There's cartoon stylized or comic or cartoon stylized work, and there's realistic style work. In, real, in the real world, you generally want to keep your saturations lower, okay? At least at the beginning. You start with very subtle saturations. You don't want to come in with these bold, heavy oranges, yellows, blues, because that's not generally what you're going to see in real life. However, if you're working in more of a simplified, cartoony style, um, you need to embolden your colors a little bit more to compensate for the lack of detail. So, rem just remember that little bit. Yeah, that blue, if we were to calm that blue down and get it more into to this type of range and then yeah, add... Get back. Th this is an, it, it's all very one tone of blue, like one, one yeah. string of it. You definitely want to get some of that unity. Mm -hmm. uh, with variety that we were, we've been talking about, like basically making up this blue with like all these other kind of sub colors and basically just dark, you know, muting it and kind of toning it down a bit mm -hmm. and kind of working it from there. Um, and yeah, the perspective looks a little, I, I see your, the reference here, but I, this is not necessarily representing the foreshortening and the looking up you know that we are this and particularly the way that the foot goes back and then some of the exaggeration that we should see right Adam you're the anatomy guy with like the, the way the, the foot should be kind of coming up and this is going to recede you know if we're looking at the forms more in space and then the, the perspective on the belts throwing that off because if we are looking up at it we're yes. going to see we're going to see the form come like this we're going to see the chest kind of pop out like that yeah 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 it's your ellipses. That's the Tyler was doing right there. You look at the the you belt. Gotta, you got to draw through the belt forms. Is straight, but the body's up, and just but curving that belt upwards and creating that ellipse is is helping to sell that illusion that we're actually looking up at the figure. So right. The knees here. The other knee's going to be go. lower because yeah. it's a little bit further back in space, and you know the, basically the feet will be on. And you know, these feet, you'd want to really kind of foreshorten and do that comic book type of exaggeration to really sell that this is coming forward. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you're when you're looking at a photo, even like this, uh, a good tip is to over exaggerate things at least twice the amount that you think you are, and then about you're halfway there. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You know, we have to exaggerate for people to get the full picture. Uh, yeah, so I, I noticed you used a picture of me on the bottom right too. I don't know where you found that reference photo, but yeah, that was. Yeah, and look at this guy. He just photoshopped <laughs> his head on your body. Like, what, what, the nerve? what the hell's the nerve of this guy? Yeah. But uh, oh, I would mention one more thing too. Uh, notice that all of your horse riders in the back have been are have been muted out, have been basically hidden behind this dark uh, you, mountainous range. You want to make sure that you don't do that. Look so up some war help. scenes from like the opening scene in like Gladiator. You'd see like lots of little glints and highlights. Yeah, picking up on anything metal and basically swords clashing and. We just it gets too obscured too quickly. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's a lot of work, but everything worthwhile is. Oh, well, there you go. That's it. All right. So what do we got here? This is our sugan. Our sugan. Our sugan. There we go. This is like a whole different take on the <laughs> Holy shit! Okay. <laughs> kind of taking up bringing the gods into this piece. Yeah. Huh. That's very interesting. So on that note, I think it's obvious this doesn't follow the flavor text at all. No. Nope. But um, so that aside, we'll critique what you had. But keep in note if you get like a task from any client, stick to the yeah, stick to the guns. Yeah. Well, it's showing he's. I, I mean, this godly figure is, so to speak, betraying. Right. We've got the word betrayal in there, but you kind of adhered to the word betrayal a little bit too much and lost sight of everything else, the bridge, the mist, the etc, etc. This is a nice sunny day, so we kind of lose that feel. Um, the foreshortening is not working here, I feel. Yeah. It's tricky there, yeah. Oh, you know what it is? It's what's overlapping what? Notice that the hand and the arm is being overlapped by the rocky cliff, but the fingers are overlapping, so it's like, it's as if the rocky cliff's here, but I've just done that. And I'm holding it like this. It's a bit weird, right? You'd want the hand to clearly overlap the rock type of idea. 
yeah, you'd want some, you'd want that arm to come in front type of idea. Yeah, if we're, if we're drawing if we're drawing through like in your scene here, we have the hand, right? I mean, yeah. I want some hot pink. Yeah. Okay. We have the hand shape. That's gonna be what it is. <laughs> That's what's up. And then you see like the forearm going back in space, so yeah. like, that's going to overlap. Yeah. And then you see it, you instantly started some sort of distortion with the shoulder. It, it feels like, God, you know, like his shoulder would be a little more, probably a little more toned down. And then yeah. even that, like I would push this whole shape here now, like taking this. That's still, this is a tough exaggeration the way the things are, and I. Like, the hand just feels way too big, I think is what it is. But I, I, if I personally had to do a scene like this at this angle, I would certainly have to reference a lot of comic book art to kind of get this right. Mm -hmm. This is definitely not my strength, but see how that... This feels even, I think, a lot more kind of in line with with what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, like, when you're doing anatomy, for instance, like, of course, I would always recommend that you learn... Anatomy. Learn the muscles. Learn where they're connected. All that kind of stuff. The skeleton. Uh, um, look up some Frank Fazetta paintings. <laughs> I've been doing this for, of course. If you're newer to the game, then you know, it's not something you've had a chance to do yet. But until then, reference things because what you're drawing here is good for somebody doing it from their head. But if you want to, when you're stepping into the realm of professional art, you need to reference those muscles and actually see what that body actually looks like. What those muscles actually look like. And you won't make those common mistakes. What you're drawing is kind of an interpretation of what male anatomy is, but it's not the real thing, right? Yeah, see, there, yeah, it's just it's missing a lot in the accuracy yeah. uh, department. Man, boobs. I can see. I can. I, I mean, I'm sure Tyler and I can both say that it's, I, we can see that you're newer. You're you're a younger artist. You're not somebody who's been doing this for the last ten years, so to speak. Um, but it's a very good, very good shot. For somebody who's a little yeah, bit I'm absolutely better. glad that you you submitted because that, that's yeah. how you really improve. Yeah, still got his arm way too damn. And, and submit more work because you're going to grow a lot from this. You know, you're going to you're going to benefit a lot. So it's definitely like, keep in the game. I don't know how that muscle it's works very at all. Artwork. Oh. But yeah, it, it's a good fair attempt. Like, and a lot of this, of course, all this is not resolved, really at all. Yeah be very deliberate so I think for you we just keep working on the sketches a lot uh, your painting will improve once your drawing does yeah and save yourself a little bit of work and create a tighter picture is notice all of that space on the left and right that's all just rocks you don't need it come don't need any of this action. crop up nice and close leave a little bit of space on the left and right of your character uh, all of your characters and keep those characters grouped up don't make everything so separated and sparse Try to make it a little tighter, and you'll make a nice tighter composition, more interesting image, and you'll save yourself work because you won't have to paint that much, right? Patrick, what do we got here? Okay, this is who? This is a. Uh... It's Patrick. Ah, yeah. All right, Patrick or Patrick Bjorkstrom. Anybody who's got Bjork in their name automatically wins. By the way, that's the default. So, you know. I Congrats. like how you paint leather. <laughs> Oh, well, I didn't even. I thought that was a rocky pillar. I didn't realize that was somebody's foot. What an awesome! Look at look at this though. I like. I just didn't see. That's what I'm saying. Saying huh. like, I looked at this. You know, maybe a minute or two at this level, and we know what's happening, kind of. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. It's like once you know, we have the liberty of blowing it up, and like he's in a full scale war here. Yeah. And that's his interpretation of that. That's totally cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Really cool. See what's going on now? Yeah, I did, it wasn't quite clear because the rendering on those on I guess that was pant legs. It looks like it looks like maybe it, maybe it's supposed to be. I don't know, but it looks like a very rock texture. It doesn't quite look like leather. If that's what you were going for, um, it has an awesome stylization. To yeah, it, but yeah. but Adam's confused by like this area up yeah, here yeah. texture wise. Very busy. No, but it looked like rock. It looks like more like. Uh, see, I, I saw the. I I was looking more like looking at this little region here, and I really yeah. liked it. Yeah, well, that works. That that looks like leather to me. It, you can see the smoothness. It's not overly gritty, and overly edgy. Yeah, um, but like I think like some of these edges, maybe if they transition, you know, a little bit softer in places yeah. as well. You got a good color density, and 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 uh, variety in it. Yeah. It's just things. Things can get over rendered when you're going for this sort of stylization, and the, the, these shapes in general, I think you could probably just 
you know, just probably simplify. Yeah. You know, like make probably make all this one shape. Mm -hmm. Maybe having it, you know, hang in, hang back, so it's like tucking into the, tucking into the boots, and just, you know, keep keep pushing that form basically. Yeah. But that definitely needs to be a little bit more on the simple side. Now, in terms of just storytelling, we see the once we see the foot and we see the guy looking back, the guy with the the bald head, we see him looking back. We start to get a clearer idea on what's actually happening. Like he's kind of like almost like a rogue type of thing. He's he's about to backstab somebody from behind, and that sneaky composition, the way you got your up in the back of the foot, is a very clever way of selling the idea of sneaking and i.e. betrayal type of idea. But I do feel like that leg is so centered and takes up so much real estate that it is stealing a bit too much space away from the narrative, forcing you with those characters in the background. It's kind of squished mm -hmm. everything over to the right side. You could shift everything, all of that, from the leg to the characters, everything, and center it more towards the middle so you're not hugging the right yeah, side. Yeah, this looks like it's just a little sectionized, a little bit too, yeah. too much. Yeah. And I'm just enriching some of these metal textures with like a little color because Adam was saying a lot of useful stuff and I wanted to just start nitpicking little yeah, yeah, go for it. little things. But yeah, it's just you can add you, you, you understand the idea of color uh, variety and kind of that, that sort of theory and things could just be pushed in a few areas. That's all. Yeah. A little more reference on, on some of the material. I don't know. A little, a little kind of backlight. But yeah, the the perspective with these two characters too are looking a little not in line with how low and dynamic this is. This is a really tricky shot to pull off. Overall. Yeah, like another thing here to mention is, uh, like for instance, a good example of something you did to help highlight something is the spear. The guy holding the spear. And you put the spear, the spear paints the waterfall which creates a nice silhouette drawing attention to it. But narratively speaking, it's the guy over on the far right with the shaped head that's noticing he's about to be backstabbed or whatever. He's a little bit, this guy, a little too close to the edge. He's too close to the edge and he's the same color. He's a very close, similar color. In, More attention in on him, less on box. him. So I would shift that over so that the guy is over the waterfall because he's the one you want to see spotting the guy behind him, right? You want to see him first, so just a little hint there. But yeah, well, Overall, I think it's a, a successful, and that I can you know, we can look at this and articulate what's happening based on the text. Yeah, it's clear you get the narrative there. It's a, there's a more efficient route to kind of get to the the final. Yep. Yeah, really nice. So awesome submission. I, 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 say I love this love this piece of work. We last but not least, John. Mr. John Lau. Hey, John. Welcome back. Who holds nothing back? Nothing back. Right. Now there's a lot to say. There's both when Tyler and I saw it for the first time, we, the same issue jumped at both of us very quickly. But with that said, one thing that always resonates in your work is the is the work you put into it, the research you put into it, and the quality of your execution is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, like this is a lovely painting, but a few little irritations that could be so easily avoided, and it's just, that's one of yeah. these things to fix essentially. Like uh, I like. I like this comp better. Which one are you looking at? This little right, trifecta. It's hard to see. Probably yeah. even on YouTube it will be. But I, I love that one. There's like a little trifecta of characters having this interaction and standoff. And I like this one more too. Yeah, that's nice. Because nice like, um, and I see what you were going for. You know, with this this really dramatic angle. But uh, nothing else aside from this character who is isolated at this perspective. Nothing else is really following the dynamics of that. The tree's going straight up, this is going straight up, and nothing is following what this character here is kind of going for. As an eye flow, right? To and, and, and you had some valid points on him too regarding his, uh, how did you word it, with the way... Well, the pose like, itself, the silhouette of the pose, closed. the actual readability, if you look over on the reference, the actual shot you took of yourself, which the only person I've seen so... <laughs> oh no, actually no, we've had two people who've a actually... Of you. So, the, the the mistake is not in the drawing. It's in the way you prepared your pose and reference. Remember when you're setting up your pose and reference, you have to keep that pose open. You have to make your silhouette open so that if we saw you in silhouette, we could still clearly read. So you never want to... If I'm holding a dagger, I'm never going to hold a dagger like this because my body is silhouetting it. If we were to see this in black and white, you'd have no idea that I was holding a dagger, right? So you'd want to hold the dagger open 
so that you can silhouette it and clearly read that, clearly read the, yeah. the form. The form should be descriptive. So the fact that you have the sphere overlapping the body, the whole you lose body, the arm, right? You lose the whole arm. You'd be better off doing this or opening it up or turning it out to the side or crossing over more, so that the arm, the whole arm and and, and bow staff is, you know, is is mm -hmm. fine. And when you translated that pose mistake into the drawing, the same thing happened. You ha ended up having to over contrast that arm and sword just so they were visible, losing the body, right? So just remember to always keep those poses open. Number one fundamental rule, because otherwise you can, you know, you'll pull. So you'll keep pushing your style, push. which I love. I like the lighting and the atmosphere. You nailed that. Um, so th there is a lot of redeeming qualities about this job. And as far as trading card style, if we're to stick to that the type of narrative that we're talking about here, this, in my opinion, is the is the best attempt out of all of the submissions that we've seen because the characters up in your face, well detailed, high contrast, lots of character betrayal. I mean, this is the like apart from the pose, this piece is falls into that embodying that type of art. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great job, John. Beautiful job. Yeah. So what's, uh, do we have any left or how are we doing? That's it. Wow, okay, all right, all right, so. Uh, I think our our, um, our favorite one, as we discussed earlier, is Roberto's. Yeah. I think yeah. The, the technical qualities on this are just fantastic. Very little to fix, if anything. Yeah. Um, and it, it really, again, nails that moment and that scene on like a whole other level. Uh, especially f f just in terms of you know just the quality of all of the details and all of that that you put in, um, it is just in terms of narrative. Just to like to, to call a spade a spade here. In the context of producing fantasy art, this is not like a trading card, but it's an awesome piece of art. So it's, you mean you're, awesome you're drawing. Grace, that's your saving grace is the fact that it's well done, um, but there would be a lot to fix compositionally if this was a piece of fantasy art. Um, also, Tyler had mentioned when we were looking at it earlier, um, if you were, depending on where you're going, because this is very cartoon shading, right? Mm -hmm. We're looking to go for a more realistic fantasy type of feel to it. Uh, you'd want to look into things like rendering, detail, lighting, uh, you know, blending, uh, those types of ideas. You know, as a cartoon, this is excellent for a cartoon and a very top notch cartoon. If there was a trading card game based off a cartoon, like I used to have a lot of those cards as a kid, this yeah. is where this comes in. So it's not yeah. like it's entirely ruled out. Yeah. Um, You'd be directing the game. Basically. So just know <laughs> what your target jobs are that you want to get or draw yeah. people for. Know what that target lies and, and base and, and steer your art toward that direction. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we always do runner-ups. Uh, for yes. me, that would be Anton's here. I, I, I love it as, as, as it is. It's, it's a gorgeous piece of art. Yeah, absolutely. And I had my runner-up. Uh, which was the one on the, what's his name? Uh, 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 Bjorkstrom? Mm hmm. Bjorkstrom? Definitely. I just, you know, that was charming, beautiful use of composition, lovely rendering, bold, eye grabbing, and really fits the genre beautifully. So uh, that really grabbed me too. So cool. awesome job this month, guys. I'll be post, if, if anyone that's watching this, I'll be posting a new poll to vote on the next challenge in the group. So just go to the Brush Sauce community link down below, and we'll get the next contest rolling. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yes. And don't forget, if you're looking for a private mentorship, uh, you can look up either one of us. We both run our own private mentorships and stuff like that. So make sure to check the, uh, the description for all the details. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Hey.